Okay, let's go. Welcome everybody. Oh my goodness me, we are absolutely sweltering here today. So everyone, can you hear me? And uh, more importantly, can you hear me? Can you hear Louise? I we think got... I'm a bit wonky. I'm a bit wonky. Um, Is it just that camera that's... I think, no, I think, it's... I think that the camera may be slightly wonky, but I wanted to get the light in today. So can you all hear Louise? You've got your microphone on, microphones on, everything's going cool, cool, cool. Yes, we're a bit disorganised today. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Good, good, good. All righty, everybody. So welcome, welcome, welcome today. Um, you are loud and clear. Thank you, Louise, too. Good, good. Thank you, Anko. Thank you so much indeed. Thank know why you, guys. Why am I drinking coffee, Louise? It is boiling. It's, it cools you down, doesn't it, if you have a hot drink when it's warm weather? Everybody knows that. No, it doesn't. What, <laughs> now, now, what did the... What did, That's what my granny used to say. Was it, was it you who said it? Or was it Dakota who said it? The fact that if you have a drink, your body then is hot and it tries to cool you down mm. because your body... I think Dakota said it, but my mm. granny used to you say might, that. Have a cup of tea. It's the best thing you can have if you're hot and thirsty. Oh. I don't know how. Oh. I just want it in a pop. It's just my <laughs> <laughs> can of pop. Absolutely <laughs> boiling hot here. So how is everybody today? Everyone loves your dress, Louise. Thank you. Very this, summery. I've had this a while, a long, a long mm. time actually. Ah, it looks good on you. Thank it you. It really does look good. And um, we've had a very busy uh, few days. I'm just trying to sort my bench out here. Oh my God, we got so. <laughs> There's just not enough hours in the day, is there? I'm absolutely smarting you. Not enough hours in the day. Um, I'm all warmed up. Bloke from Leeds in Colorado basement doing some plumbing work. Nice. Uh, bloke from Leeds. So what's a chap from Leeds doing in Colorado? My goodness me. Well, I suppose at the end mm. of the day, if you're going to be somewhere, might as well be in Colorado. Well, yes. Um, yeah. So tell us, Louise, where have we been? <gasps> we went last minute to London's Hatton Garden. It was last minute. It was the day, it was it was the day, day before. We just booked out. We had and some we business went. there and we just decided to have some things to return. And we thought rather than... Um, post but the returns post we just it. thought we'd get on a train get on a train and go to london and absolutely fabulous it was mm, hatton brilliant. garden i mean i hadn't been to hatton garden for 30 odd years it's still pretty much the same pretty much just like jewelry shops there um we, we saw a few people mm -hmm. uh various various you know different ends of the spectrum really wasn't it in one respect style wise location wise mm -hmm. office wise wasn't yeah. it yeah Absolutely. And then we ended up going to A.E. Ward. Yes. And oh, that, my goodness. What an amazing place. That was a fabulous. If you haven't gone, if you're in the UK and you haven't gone to A.E. Ward, and we always recommend, people say, where's the best place to get gemstones? And we always recommend A.E. Ward. And if you go to A.E. Ward, you'll see why. Because it, oh, they had everything. You turned into a bit of a gem Ooh, junkie. Hang, I on, to, hang on, hang on, hang on. I've just gone to black, I think. Have I? No, no, we're no, okay. No, you're Sorry, okay. Yeah. I had to... Um, I had to reel you in a bit, didn't I? Mmm. Oh my god, look at this, look at this. Look at this. Oh my god, I, like, love I, I love that. I want one of these, I want one of these. I want a salt and pepper diamond. I want a hook of a diamond. I want, I want kind of change sapphire. It's like, whoa, what are, you, what are you going to do with all these then? What are you going to do with them? I don't know. I want them. <laughs> I'll put them on my desk and I'll wait for inspiration to come to me. But we got lots and lots of things. Yeah, the reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. The best thing was, it was just an amazing place because we went to see, 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 see Tom. And um, we're standing there and, okay, we had to get a few stones for some uh, repairs that we're doing, replacements, that sort of thing. And then we said, what's all this thing about salt and pepper diamonds? It's like, what? Salt and pepper diamonds, yeah. So we went down like this, blah, 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 brought up trays of them, mm. trays of these salt and pepper diamonds. And then we, then we had choose in so there. You to look at them all then, didn't oh, we? Oh, you get to look at them all, Obviously. depending on the price and this, that, and the other. <laughs> and then you go, well, those are great. Have a look at these. And he gets these out. And then we're saying, what are these, these Herkimer diamonds? Like, Talk about, yep, then no problem. Goes. goes in this world. He doesn't go anywhere. He's still standing there. He just goes down. Get some trays up, didn't he? Have a look at this. Have a look at that. Louise said, then we've got any colour chain sapphires. Colour chain sapphires? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they just seem to have everything. You know, it's just like that magician, isn't it? Who like who has the the, the, the tube and he and he gets like gets the gets the Cinzano out, gets the Campari out. It's like Mary the, Poppins bag, yeah, isn't it? It was just, it was just incredible. absolutely amazing. And then we got some things to tell you, but then he said, oh, have you seen the self-service section down at the end? Mm. What? <laughs> so, 
So we went down the end and there's all these drawers you can pull out and it's just full. I felt a bit cheeky at first, just, you know, if you pull out the first drawer and you're like, mm, someone's going to tell me off and then you're ransacking them and like, what? your hands and knees and you're at <laughs> the bottom and you're oh my God, look at these, oh my God, look at these. Amazing. Brilliant. Yeah, Amazing. fantastic place. It was really, really awesome. Um, but yeah, uh, anything you want. They've even got like lepidorists there. They, they will, they will I cut, didn't they know will cut the stems for visited. you. Because obviously we order from them and ring them up and the, the next day, yeah. what we've asked for is here. It's amazing. Mm. But um, yeah, I didn't realise they actually had a stone cutter there. Mm, but it was... It we'll was, cut it, to your specifications. It was phenomenal, mm. phenomenal. And, oh, my stones are downstairs. Shall I go and get them? Yeah. But you want the, the ones from Saturday? Yeah. Um, um, uh, um, um, if you're causing Penny, go. It's fabulous. Yeah. Make the trip to London. Yeah. It's brilliant. Just, just go. It's, it's, if you go, if you go down, if you walk down Hatton Garden from like the Fleet Street or whatever, banking end, um, go down. If you, if you see Costa on your left, it's the, this, the, the gap before Costa. And you just push a button and you just go up one flight of stairs and you push another button and that's how it is. Because we, we walked from Paddington <laughs> to Hatton Garden, which was about... It's an hour. About an hour. But, you know, it was a nice day. It was doable. It was fine. So, you know, if you're going into the city from out of the city, you're going you're gonna to get off at Paddington, aren't you? And it is, mm. it is within walking distance oh, if, yeah, you, if, yeah. you like, if you like a long walk. Mm. But, yeah, it was, we, were, we were knackered when we got home. But um, I didn't fancy going on the tube. Didn't feel quite ready for... And we try and no. keep our distance and wear our masks, obviously, but it's just what other people are doing, isn't it? That I was a bit, we're kind of, we were like the little kind of country mice with me in the big city, <laughs> just like, oh, people everywhere. <laughs> but it was good. It was good. good. Shall I get these stones? You can talk. I might bite you. I'll go down and get them. No, I'll go and get the stones. You're talking, Louise. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was. It was absolutely fab. Uh, yeah, definitely go, Romy. It's really, really good. No, um, I would like to know if your online courses include information as to what I need for the item we're going to be making, e.g. stone setting, what size. Um, Lou, do you mean um, the at the bench um, tutorials or do you mean the courses which have been a long time in production, admittedly, um, for beginners? Which, which courses or tutorials, tutorials do you mean? Um, if you can give me a bit more information, we can get you an answer on that. Oh, here he comes. Oh. Do you, when, when, it, I show so often I, I watch out the bench, but do you have a list of tools for each? No. It's not that many projects, it's more technique driven, isn't it? So that you've got the, um, the, the wherewithal to just go off and make the things that you want to make rather than, yeah. it's, it's kind of like, I tell you, it's not pres prescriptive learning, is it? It's just teaches you to be free and make what you like. Yes, mm. we at the end of at the end of sort of each project, I go through the materials that I use, and perhaps I'll say you know one point two millimeter this and eighteen millimeter length of this. So I tell you the tools, and I oh, try. Sorry, I just got some more information. The online courses, yes, they will be um, a list. <laughs> oh, definitely the online yeah, courses. Yeah, there'll be a list. Oh yeah, yeah, hundred yeah, yeah, percent. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. but what we try and do is to do projects that are within everyone's grasp within a perhaps a student toolbox just looking down here see if i got like a student toolbox that you can pick up say from cookson's for around about 100 pounds 120 150 pounds that will just have basic pliers you know your soldering kit and so forth we don't try and bamboozle you with the latest equipment although i do use things like a disc cutter but i can say well you can just simply cut that out by hand and uh, there's a project that we've done now and, and i said you can use a disc cutter you can use a domin punch domin set but you don't have to they're not a necessary part of the project you can still make do with what you've got so we try and basically do it all and there's not much point sort of us getting you know microscopes and, and, and micro balls and setting blocks and and all that sort of gubbins if it's not going to be suitable for you although we will be using it in certain projects but the majority of projects you they're don't nice. want that when you're a beginner do you no. you don't want to be no exactly buying expensive no. tools equipment no. you know it's it's it can be expensive to start out, but it can be... Yeah, you can just you can get away kind with of, the basic tool Yeah, box, like second-hand things, eBay, whatever, as long as you're careful with places like that. But yeah, hmm. um, without 
forking out for microscopes and things like that before you need them. So sorry, yeah. I interrupted you. No, 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 it's, yeah. it's exactly, exactly right. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, if, if you're producing projects that you need all this equipment, it's going to put people off. Mm -hmm. And if you can come along with a toolbox, put it on your bench like that, and everything that you've got in that toolbox you use to make the projects, absolutely brilliant. And then you can progress perhaps to a doming set if you want to produce three-dimensional things, uh, a disc cutter if you want to cut exact circles. You know, there are other a uh, piece of equipment that will help you and make your life a lot easier. Mm. Anyway, I've you'll got... collect everything else over time, won't you? Oh, yeah, because you, you don't want to be having a big oh. kind of expense no, initially, no, no, do you? No, no, exactly. So yeah, it's knowing exactly. what to have, though, isn't it? Exactly. And that's that's, that's the want, issue which we can help with. Yes, mm. exactly right. Yeah, exactly. So that's what we're all about. So we got some stones here. We got a little salt and pepper uh, rose cut, little little guy there. We've got a, uh, a genuine, real, color chain sapphire. That's Oh, I'm lagging. Sorry, yeah, I was going to say that's the salt and pepper. <laughs> Sorry, I was looking at that. Yeah, yeah, you know the difference. We've got a gorgeous little, like a diamond-shaped salt and pepper diamond as well. We've got a natural, uh, natural diamond here, which is just like the little uh, square. Um, and then what's also quite interesting, we've also got some uh, synthetic. No, yes. Yeah, yeah. Synthetic color change sapphires as well, which is brilliant, and. We've also got Herkimer diamonds. Now, I'm going to pass Romy it. wants to see the rose cut salt and pepper, please, again. You can't read no, that. The, the, are you doing it? So I'm, I keep looking at it, it's confusing me, there's a lag. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we've got this little rose cut uh, salt and pepper, just trying to get the light. And it's a flat back rose cut. And this is, what is this, half carrot? No, it's 40 points. So we've got something like that. We're going to do something really nice with that. A nice bit of rose gold and diamonds. We're going to have that. And there's also this little kite shape, diamond shaped one as well. That shows a nice lot of colour in the light, doesn't it? That one. I like that the other. Really... I like the one that's. I like that one. I think yes. it's a lot more interesting. You like that one. Mm -hmm. um, and then Louise is going to tell us our resident gemologist. No, I'm not a gemologist. Is but going okay. to we'll try and about Herkimer diamonds because we found out some quite interesting facts about we them. We did. We well, we we knew they were from the Herkimer mine in yeah. New York. That's where they originated, and they're not diamonds. Um, and why they, are they called Herkimer? Because of the guy who found them in the mine, yep. I think. Yep. Um, so they are not um, peculiar to that particular mine. Apparently, all that makes them a Herkimer diamond is the fact that they, they're actually quartz and they are double terminated quartz. So they're pointy on both ends. Yeah. So that's, that's what makes it a Herkimer diamond. This is what Tom was explaining to me on Friday. So if you cut them, um, to set them, there's no, there's no evidence that it was ever a Herkimer diamond, which, not a diamond, but yeah. yeah. Mm. And they can be mined from around from the anywhere, world. as long as they're, d they're double, double terminated quartz, quartz. they are classed as Herkimer diamonds, yeah. And the, Herkimer, and the, the double end, is that right, Louise, like that, double truncated mm, like yeah. that? Mm -hmm. As long as, this, if, if any quartz that is doubly, doubly truncated, if that makes sense, yeah, mm -hmm. it is classed as a Herkimer diamond. So the thing is, as soon as you start to cut it and you take that off and take that off, it's That's just quite a, piece, a good example. It's of just a piece, of, a piece of quartz. Can we try and zoom in on you? Ooh, I'm not. One. We haven't got any tweezers up here, have we? No. Can I? You can no. see. Can you? Tell you what, bring them over here. I'll put it on the on the close up. Put it on right there. Here. Yeah. Yeah. We've got some gemology news as well, actually, for you guys, which is very exciting. So that is a good. Example because it's trying to get a focus. Uh, and it was funny because we brought these in this morning, and um, Dakota, who works in the shop, we show her all sorts when we get like lovely diamonds in and nice pieces. We show her, and she's like, I'm always like, oh wow, trying them all on. And um, she is never impressed no. by any of them. Is she? No. She's just, we showed her a three carat diamond solitaire yeah. with diamond set shoulders and. Um, I, I forgot yeah. I was wearing it, <laughs> but um, yeah, she wasn't wasn't impressed by that. But she really liked these. She did, yeah, exactly. Mm. So yeah. yeah, they are absolutely amazing. Really, really good. 
Yeah. Yes, they have synthetics as well. Yeah, Janet, the um, synthetic color change sapphires were from Wards. Yep. So yeah. So it was really, really good. It was a really, and, really good trip. And they have they have trays and trays of imitation corals and imitation all sorts. They have uh, Caesars, Cubits of Come. They have literally every stone. They me, they have like geodes cut in half. They have marbles made out of gems. It, literally, they have strands of pearls and beads all over the walls as well. Absolutely brilliant. If you're interested in gemology, which you know lots of you are, I need to get my calendar up now because I can't remember what the date is, but it's Monday the 12th of July. 12th of July. We have got, this was my exciting news, we have got, um, we have got a guest on Gemology. At The Bench Live. Uh, we're going to have Kerry from Gemology Rocks, who's going to be here to answer everybody's questions, yeah, everybody's including got, mine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying not to hog it too much. So yeah, if you have any Gemology questions, um, keep them in, in your little memory bank or question bank, um, because she is just a phenomenally um, knowledgeable no, yeah. and, and talented gemologist. What she doesn't know isn't worth knowing, so mm. yeah. 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 So, so it's we're super excited. Questions. Yes. So basically, I will be in your seat, and you can be in my seat. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> you can be in charge, and I'll so, be yeah. I'll be asking the oh shoot, I'll be asking the questions. Excellent. Yes. It'll be good, wouldn't it? That's, so that's the twelfth of July. Yes. So, so that's very exciting. Yeah. yeah. So I should be here for that, which is really good. Yeah. Oh, I. Ah, it's so so hot here. Mm. It's so so hot. I'm going on one of her lab, well, I'm not sure if it's a lab class or a, a diamond, diamond for designers, mm. which is on in Cardiff. So I'm going to be going to that. When is that? I think that's the Wednesday of the same week. Is it? Yes. Nice. Yeah. I know, I'll be the boss on the 12th of July, <laughs> Romy. <laughs> uh, oh, there we go. Fiona says, just spent the day uh, in Plymouth on Saturday. She was amazing, all about diamonds. Oh, fab. Yeah, you, you enjoyed in, the course. You were in Victoria Stewart's gallery, weren't you? Um, down on the Barbican. Yes. Oh, fab. It was brilliant. Oh, good. I'm really mm. looking forward to it. I can't wait. Mm. It's going to be fab. Yes. The thing is, though, when I come back with all my new knowledge, yeah. I just get taking the mickey out of because downstairs they go, because they don't know. <laughs> we don't know how so of it they, me, they, so you could be bamboozling them. They us take the mickey apps. out of me, sends me on these courses, and then laughs at me for knowing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness me. Wow, look at the time 23 minutes. Past wow, we've four. just been waffling. We've we've been been have to that's what we do best. <laughs> we do waffle, I must admit. <laughs> Right then, Louise, it is Monday. like a question? It, it is Monday, the 14th of June. I think it's about time we had some questions. Oh, I did a lot of my training with Victoria. Penny, Penny, do you know anyone in Brixham who has a bed and breakfast that has a few weeks spare in the school holidays? Why? Because Lisa in the post office is asked after someone. Okay. <laughs> so she asked, she asked me to ask you. Yes, weeks ago. So Penny, if you know anybody who has some bed and breakfasts in Brixham, please I get in touch. I thought we were going away then. <laughs> <laughs> please do get in touch. If you want to go away, Louise, we'll go to Brixham. Lovely place, Brixham. Okay. Okay. Right, do you want a question? No, not yet. I'll just start oh, you got to do your... Okay. My, it is the 14th of June. It is Monday, 4pm. No, it's not. It's 24 minutes past four. Let's have a question, Lou. <laughs> Jessica would like to know, how can I maintain a perfect circle cut from sheet during the filing and polishing process? It takes a lot of practice. You can obviously use your dividers to, divide, to, to go around to scribe a circle. You can use a circle template to do the circle, but the rest is up to you. If you cut out a circle, always saw on the outside of the line that you scribed or you've drawn, okay? Don't cut on the line, because as soon as you've cut on the line, the line disappears. You don't know what's going to be a perfect circle. So always cut to the outside and then file to the line. You can file it, you can have the piece on its edge and file it, or you can put it horizontal and bring the file up and down. So always cut on the outside, file to the the line and it is basically practice 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 use a nice fine file and just take your time and you should be able to get a perfect perfect circle 
Janet, Janet's daughter was born in Brixham, South Devon, wonderful part of the world and full of bed and breakfast. Best ones on the hill overlooking the harbour. Thank you, Janet. Next question, please, Louise. Okay, um, Marin is asking for tips on working with fine gallery wire. Trying to make a ring and keep melting it, even with keeping the flame moving around the outside of the piece. Soldering from above on a solderite board. Hmm, this, um, yes, how are you soldering it? How is she soldering it? Was she soldering it together or soldering it to a base? Uh, gallery wire, so. So I guess it's <coughs> soldering it to a base. So if you have your, your gallery wire, yeah? See if I just draw that, yeah? And there's all your little, yeah. You get the idea, general gist of the idea. So obviously what you're finding out is that you put your torch from above, the flame comes here, okay? These little pointy bits or whatever is, the thin bits are gonna get hot quicker than the main part of the body. So what you've got to do is really solder it from below. Now, if you're soldering it onto say a base, yeah, onto a base. We, however, this is gonna take a lot of heat. Let me know before we, as I'm working, as I'm talking away, let me know if you're just simply soldering it for a ring or soldering it onto a base as we've got on here, okay? Now, the problem is you get your torch from above here, okay? These little pointy bits, because they're thinner, are going to overheat and melt before this gets up to temperature and the base gets up to temperature. So in this scenario, what I would do is have to heat it. To the back plate. Brilliant, yeah. okay. So what you gotta do is heat it from underneath, okay? So there is your plate. Here is your gallery on the top like this. Heat it. You can put um, a little bit of um, a solder board and an, like on top like that and then get your flame in underneath it because you've got to get this hot enough for the solder to flow. The heat will be transferred from the base to the gallery. So don't heat the gallery with the torch because you will melt it. Just rely upon the heat, heating up the base. When the base gets hotter and hotter and hotter, the heat will be transferred to the gallery, okay? And it is the metal that melts the solder, not the flame. So bear that in mind. So if you've got your little bits of pallium, say on the outside here or on the inside, you don't put the flame on the solder because the solder being small will ball up and you think the solder's not flowing. But it's the metal that's got to be the right temperature. So as soon as the metal gets to the temperature of the melting point of the solder, the solder will melt, okay? So this gets hotter and hotter, hotter. It gets, uh, I don't know, 780 degrees. And then this goes, oh, it's the right temperature for me to go and melt. And it will melt, okay? <laughs> and then, because the gallery wire is in contact with the base, that gets hotter and hotter and hotter. So the solder then will run all the way around. So you can put it on a tripod with a bit of gauze. You can get um, a soldering wig, which is just like a big bundle of um, binding wire, and you can get the flame from underneath. So keep the flame underneath, or just get you know a couple of little solder bricks and put a couple of little solder bricks on top, and then put the bezel on top of that, and do it that way, and your gallery will not melt because it can't melt because the torch is not on it. Oh, I am absolutely cooking. <laughs> Next question, please, Louise. <laughs> um, Tanya would like to make hoop earrings. How do I do this, please? Hollow. Can we have some more info, Tanya? And hinged, I'm hinged? guessing? Are they like hinged ones? Are they hollow ones? Are they solid ones? Um, are they want bits of wood, just like the, with the wire? Just let us know. Okay. We'll have another one in the meantime, please, Libby. Okay. Oh! We've got the light going off, which means, have we, have we, have we? 
Ah, no, the light normally goes off when we have a super chat and we don't have a super chat. What's going on, Louise? Mrs. Lloyd. Mrs. Lloyd. Let's mm. tune up. But thank you very much if anybody's donated. But thank you very much indeed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sorry, Louise. Maybe have a next question, please. Okay. Um... Is it Marin's cane? Can't wait for my solder. Your solder will thank you. It'll go, oh, I'm the right temperature. Let's flow. Let's flow between those surfaces. <laughs> then anyway, let's go. Next question, please. Is the heat is getting to me? Okay. Um, <laughs> Julia is asking, can you suggest where my file tends to chatter? Talking tools now. Okay. Just solder. Um, it is fairly new. Um, a Volobi flat file cut for what am I doing wrong? Okay, so this is because the piece that you're... Um, your filing is not being held tight enough. Um, sometimes if you are soldering or filing, sorry, say a ring and you've got it on your, on your peg, we can't have got the peg here, can we zoomed in the camera? Okay, so here we go here. So we've got the ring and your filing, okay? If the ring is standing too high, I don't know why it's focusing on the background. <laughs> Let's zoom in here. Okay, there we go. That's better. So, if you're filing like this and the ring is... <laughs> dropping it. If the ring is right above and you're trying to file it, there's lots of movement in this. There's lots of movement. If you've got the ring down here and you're filing it, if this is moving, the file will chatter. And it's all it is. As it's pushing, the teeth are going eh, 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 against the metal and the metal's going... Ooh, I don't know why I'm doing this today. I'm just, <laughs> I'm having a funny today. So metal's going, hoo, 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 and it's chattering as the file's going over. So what you gotta do is make sure that the metal is nice and firmly on the peg, or you have it really, really sort of low on the peg, so the metal does not have chance to move. And it is the movement of the metal that is causing it to chatter. Sometimes you can put a little bit of talc on the uh, teeth as well, which helps, um, but just make sure that your piece is held really tight. Clamp it, put it in, uh, you know, like a, the ring clamp, something like that, something that you can get the ring, you know, get the ring nice and low like this, and then you can file it, and it is not going to chatter. But if you put that ring right up like that, and you're trying to file, the ring can move. That's why it's chattering. I'm starving, Lou. I'm absolutely starving. Anything <laughs> else now? I'm hot. I'm starving. I want a drink. <laughs> Anything else now? I've got a drink, thanks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Susan is asking, do you or have you tried cooking out fire scale with charcoal and furnace? Um, I've never tried. I don't think you can cook out fire scale because it's actually in the metal. So I don't think it can burn out. But I'd be very interested if you could point me to something on the internet that says you can burn out fire scale, but I don't think you can. Next okay. question. Um, Trevor is saying, can you talk about filled gold and its usefulness or otherwise, in your opinion? Filled gold, never use filled gold, gold filled, never use it at all. Um, I feel that in what we do with our shop and our workshop, there is no need for gold filled. I must admit you um, can see now in places like Cookson that sell gold filled, which obviously then does bring down the, uh, the price of the piece, but I think then you've got problems. You still have to use the gold solder. Um, so I'm afraid I can't really sort of say much about it, but I don't use it. So I'm out. <laughs> uh, okay. Paul says, how's the saw reviews going? At the moment, Paul, um, I've got a lot of other things going on at the moment. I've been getting the saw blades as well. So I've got lots of different types of saw blades uh, to try out. So we're going to be doing some reviews. Somebody was going to try and get me a haymaker. I'm not going to bother now. I'm just going to crack on with a few saws that I've got. But yes, it'll be over the next few weeks, the, uh, the great saw debate unless I can think of anything else that's quite catchy and gimmicky. I don't know. 
Okay. Next question. Uh, Janet is saying, very interesting article on Mail Online today about man-made diamonds. Quite a debatable subject it is, isn't it? Mm. Will it be fake or fortune in a few years from now? Oh, I've just remembered. I signed up for a webinar last week and you I did. didn't end up. And I worked through it and I forgot. But um, there's an organisation now who um, certify um, both man-made, lab-grown and mined diamonds. Mm. Um by their uh, sustainability credentials. Mm, yeah, okay. so I would be able to tell you more, but I forgot to watch the webinar. <laughs> but if, if you look at Professional Jeweler, I think that's where I read the, the article. Mm, so if okay. anyone saw it, I mean, I might, I might be able to catch up with it, or if I... But there must be a recording of it somewhere. It might be a recording of it, yeah, but I really did want to see it, and then I worked through and forgot. So, um, mm. which I thought would be really good, because it would put a lot of that debate to bed, wouldn't it, if you can... Yeah. I don't know if there's some system for comparing them in terms of the uh, mm. carbon footprint and the impact on the environment, sustainability, that sort of thing. Because there was a bit of a chat going on in the, the At The Bench forum, isn't there, about, about lab-grown diamonds and how, yeah. how are we going to be able to distinguish lab-grown diamonds once the documentation gets separated from the stones? Mm. People could pass them off as lab-grown. Then somebody was saying about um, there's going to be laser inscriptions on the girdles, yeah. and everything so it's it's a huge pandora's gone to man-made yeah. susan yeah there's been a heck of a debate with pandora saying the professional jeweler oh they just opened up a can of worms haven't they i think so yeah mm. <sighs> i think we could talk about that yes till tea time couldn't we but yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah yeah but yeah it is a very interesting debate yes. with mm. it's like a double-edged sword isn't it so yeah it's yeah. a bit of a hornet's nest yes yes but yeah it is very interesting but I thought that, you know, if there was some sort of standard certification, mm. that's got to be a good thing, isn't it? Yes. Um, okay, let's see. The bloke from Leeds um, said we've got posh voices. <laughs> uh, who is in um, Annie's basement, yeah. <laughs> Doing some work, let I had, yeah. Let out. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Um, oh yeah, we did the online courses, handouts, yes. Um, okay, Paul, hi Paul. Um, okay, let's have a look. Janet's first kit was the university kit from Cookson's, really good. Mm. Um, and used most of it except the free toolbox. Okay, and Julian is asking, is there a ring stretcher you would recommend, not too expensive, just for plain rings? Plain rings without stones, like a, like a wedding ring, a wedding band stretcher. Um, not too expensive, just for plain rings. <laughs> there is, there is this, there is this, this, I mentioned, I think it was last week. It is um, a small little device that you use a hammer with. Now, as you know, you can get the upright wedding ring stretcher that you pull the handle, the mandrel is split, it opens up. Um, we've got one here, we've got a Durston one that I picked up, it's about £300. It's a lot of money. But what you can buy um, is, and I think I drew this last time, and it is a conical, I'm sure these, this may be, um, oh my god, I can't even draw. This may be um, stepped, I'm not too sure. Um, Oh my gosh, Louise, I can't do it today. I can't. Yeah, so it may be stepped. And the idea is you put the ring on here and then you bash something in the middle and it will expand and it will open. They are quite cheap. Um, I can't remember for the life of me, uh, perhaps if, if Louise has got five minutes a bit later on, perhaps you can look for these. These are um, ring stretches and they will stretch plain bands. That's all it is. And I'm sure the device is about four or five inches high. It's like that, it may be stepped. The, the mandrels are split, but they're held together by a ring on the top, a ring on the bottom. And basically the hammer comes down and it forces it open and it pushes the ring bigger. Quite cheap. I haven't used one, but I think they are a little bit on the, you know, no, not dodgy side, but you've got to be so careful because the stress of suddenly moving that ring may be a bit too much and it may split but that would be your cheapest option for enlarging plain wedding bands or just get your mandrel and just get a nice weighted mallet and put the ring down and start to tap that would be your other way or 
You can also pick up some really quite cheap uh, gem ring stretchers, the sort where you have a central mandrel uh, like that, that comes on a base that does that. Yep, and then on- Can you the just tap it bigger? Yeah, yeah. Um, just mentioned that with, with, the, uh, with, with the mandrel, yeah. Sorry, Absolutely. I was listening. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you've also got this device here, which does this, and there's a handle that comes off. Or you could have like the gem ring stretcher that does that, and this spins back and forth. You put the ring on here, yep. Yeah. And it looks like a bit of a rolling mill <coughs> that would come around, and that would be something that you could use. You can pick these up quite cheap, and then you can stretch gem rings uh, or wedding rings with them as well. Okay. May I have another question, please, David? Yeah, Kristen has got a question about cut burrs. To round the end of an ear wire, is a cut burr the easiest way to do this? What size do I use? Are they ever used for setting or other uses? They are. So if you're using, uh, say, 0.8 millimeter wire, use something like a one millimeter, perhaps one and a half millimeter, put it on the end. And the trick is, is to, is for, yeah, uh, I can say. So the ear wire is here, you put the cut burr on here, it's spinning, okay, so it spins, for me, it would spin in, say, whatever direction this is to you. For me, this is clockwise. But what you want to do is get it on the end and then you move it anti-clockwise around the end of the wire. And that will just gently round off those rough edges. It's quicker and easier to do that. Then you can just polish that little end of the e-wire. We do use them in setting because then where you've got your stone here, you've got the claws coming up. Yeah like this, you've got your, the setting coming up. It's exactly the same thing. These are ends of wires. You put the cut burr on top, yep, and you just spin that, and they will just round the ends of your claws as well. So you be use them in setting as well, absolutely. But yeah, point eight. so you always use a slightly bigger cut burr. Don't try and use the same size cut burr as the wire, because it would never work. Try and go a little bit on the bigger side. Maybe have another question, please, Louise. Okay. Try and um, rush a few of these, because I'm not going to be able to stay here long. Really. Thomas, are they difficult to set? I think you mean, I'm guessing you mean Herkimers. the Herkimers. And Lou is saying, I had a few of those Herks. What would you make with them? Ooh, I have no idea. How could you wire wrap them? You could wire, could you wire wrap them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but we've no idea yet. There's a reason why we got them, because we're going to have a play around with them. Um, you know, you, you can have things like tension setting. We do the... Um, you know, we've got the, the diamond here and you can set it, you can tension set it that way. Um, I'm not quite sure how the quartz would be if you want to set them like that, whether that would be too much stress on the piece. You know, there's your double-ended and there's your, you know, you could do those sort of things with it. Um, just look on, look on somewhere like Pinterest, something like that, or on Google. Hook them a diamond rings and just to see how they're set. We don't know yet, we're gonna have a play. Some are longer than others, aren't they? So they obviously lend themselves to yeah. something different to mm. something they're a bit all gonna more be different. Diddy. I don't know. Mm. Mm. So we're gonna have a bit of a play around claw set, um, claw each end of the hooks for a necklace. Yes, you could. Uh, but yeah, there's lots of different ways. We're gonna have a play. And that was the whole idea, wasn't it? Getting all these stones. We're going to be playing with them. Yes. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, for each end of the hooks for a necklace, yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now you have another question, please, Madhu. Yes. Um, okay. Brixham, Brixham. Um, Lee is asking, what's the best way to ensure the two rings are parallel in a cage ring when soldering, using three mil round wire and the rings are five mil apart? Say that again. Sorry. I, What's I, the I, best way to ensure the, the two are rings are parallel, parallel in a cage ring? In a cage ring. You're just looking at me like a dog that's just been shown a card trick now, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> How many dogs do you see having card tricks presented to them? Well, that's so, what they would look like. Sorry, so, 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 so you've got one ring and you've got another ring, yeah? Read it out to me again, okay. step what's by the step. Best, what's the best way? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. To ensure yeah. 
the two rings are parallel in a cage ring. In a cage ring. Yes. When that, soldering. That, 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 I don't understand what a cage ring is. Okay. But, but go on. Lee, can we have a bit more info, please, lovely? Yeah. Um, using three mil round wire and the rings are five mil apart. Lee, it's fine. Don't say sorry. It's, it's, it's probably us being... Yes. Yeah. Um, so obviously, yeah. we're, obviously the way I'm reading the question. No, no. <laughs> just looking at me like, do it properly. I, I don't, I, I think if that's, if that's a ring, I don't know, a cage ring, don't, I'm not quite sure. If you, can, if, you can, if you can give us a link to put into the chat, we'll have a look. Yeah. But if you've got this and it's five mil, I'm not, I'm not quite sure what you mean. If you want to keep these parallel, you could always put a piece of metal. Two rings with pillars between them. Pillars. Um, so okay, so, so... Three so, or four pillars. Ah, right, okay. So is it something like that? Is, it, the, like, is it like that? And see these, two rings on the right. And these Would are, they be joined by the pillars? Do you see what I mean? Like that. Like that. Or Do you mean this? Pillars? Yeah, that's what I, that's what I thought. Yeah. Draw pillars between the two rings, yeah. Like, like that. that. Like the one on the right, Lee. Is that yeah. the right? So what I would do is, is, is solder here. Oh, well, first of all. The first drawing, yes. Yeah. So the one on the right-hand side. <laughs> yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Get rid okay. of that one, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. So <laughs> if you want to make sure that the wires go on the outside and these two are parallel, so what I would do is I would put some packing in between these rings. I would put a piece of, uh, you know, so I'd have a piece of metal, uh, yeah, and then you'd put so like one ring on the top, but just overlapping slightly. Does that make sense? And then you'd have the other ring then coming around underneath, yeah, like that. That would be coming around underneath. Does that make sense? Then the metal here then is the same thickness. Then you'd solder the wire on this side because these rings are. Do you know what I mean? Then you'd solder there, you'd solder there. Then you would take away your packing piece that is between those two rings. Yeah, and then your, your two rings are now being held apart by this here that you soldered. Then you would come along and solder your other one on there. So don't try and solder them all together in one go. Do one side first. And then once you've soldered these, then do this side. If you're not sure, you can always still put a piece of packing in between, um, in between these two, just to keep them separated if you wanted to. But that is the way I would do it. Do one side, do the other side, pack it in between that keeps the two rings apart. Don't have a huge piece of metal because that's going to take a lot of heating up, but perhaps a piece of wire, square section wire, rectangular section wire, just wide enough to go through for the two rings to rest um, and you should be able to solder it. And he said try to solder all at once. No, don't. Just just solder one side and then you can look at it and if, if they're slightly skew if you can always just bend it down a little bit to get them parallel, then you can solder the other end on. But don't try and do it in one go. It's far more difficult. Solder them the one side, then the other side. Yeah, you've got that. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Cool. Okay. Um, James is looking to buy a Durston rolling mill as cheaply as possible. Is the 80 mil too small to be practical? If so, is there a size chart that isn't too small but is also reasonably priced? <laughs> this, this is the thing, isn't it? This is this is the problem you got. Um, try. Oh, yeah. no matter what mill you have you should always try and go perhaps wider than what you actually need. If you go for the 80 millimeters and then you want to, I don't have any here, and, and then you think, oh, do you know, I want to do some, do some texture and use some texture plates. The mill isn't going to be wide enough. So try and get something that is going to accommodate your needs, not only now, but also in the future. So if all, and also if all you can afford, what, what, what size was that one down there, Louise? Can do you remember? I don't know. I've got, there's this one here. I'm just trying to bring this one up. Oh, picking it up by the handle. Oh, <laughs> I nearly <laughs> broke my foot, didn't I, on the weekend? <laughs> so this 
This is a mini mill. This is a mini 100. Okay, it's a direct drive. So you can see the handle goes directly into this. This would be the minimum that I would buy. Okay, because the width across here is about, uh, let's have a look. Uh, what's that? That's, the flats are around about 65. So I wouldn't go any smaller than this, okay? Mini 100, that's 100 millimeters from pillar to pillar. So that is the best way that you're going to uh, have that. This has some extension rollers, but if you can afford the next one up again, get rid of that person, thank you very much. You are blocked, you are blocked. Thank you, Louise. And I love doing that. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Bye, troll. <laughs> so this is a direct drive. It's a lot harder. So if it, again, if it was me, save up for something like this, a, with one with a gearbox, with a big box by here, it's gonna be a lot better for you in the long run at a later date, okay? This is great. If all you're gonna do is some occasional rolling down, it's gonna be okay, but try and save up for something that's a bit more expensive that has a gearbox. It is expensive, but you know what? It will last you. I'm gonna put this down now, hang on. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. We, um, yeah, again, because, because I, again, I bought a rolling mill 35 years ago, gearbox, still use it today. I'm going to say that soon. Huh? Okay, there we go. So, do I recommend Pepe products? No. Next question, please, Louise. <laughs> <laughs> um,. Bonnie um, tried to, sorry, Bonnie is saying, I cast an ingot, you just threw me then when you said that. That was a I bit cast an ingot. I do yes, apologise. I cast an ingot, at least in, said if the if best. In, if in, if in, I cast an ingot, the, if in but in I tried to ruin it. Pepe, Pepe <laughs> are a good brand. I'm British, so I'm a British guy through and through. I'd always go and try and buy British myself. But Pepe do make some good products. We we know the Durstons as well, don't we? And we know that of course. they are yeah. brilliant people. They have their business ethics align with ours, and yeah, and we and they and they and they produce amazing products. Yeah. So that's and, why and we recommend them. I would recommend them over anybody else, not just that, but Cavalian and all the other rolling mill manufacturers. Not many out there now, actually. Mm. So yeah, obviously, if you're in the US, they do produce some cheaper rolling mills than Durson. I quite understand that, and people do have a preference. Pepe made in the US. Durston made in the UK, perhaps Pepe would favour the American market and we favour the British market, don't we? Durston. I think it's just you, just Durston, aren't you? If you cut Andrew in half, he would have Durston running through him like a stick of rock. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. yeah. I have a good working relationship with, with Durston, so yeah. Yeah, I would recommend them over anybody else, yeah. Yeah, Obviously, that's, yeah, that's nothing, yeah, that was, yeah. That was yeah. something uh, to be childish, is there, but yeah. No, no, but the you know, reason why I say that is the fact that I've had a Durston mill. There weren't that many manufacturers many, many years ago. I bought a Durston rolling mill 35 years ago. It is still working today. It hasn't needed replacing, no gears are broken, nothing has broken, the rolls are still the same today as it was 35 years ago. So that is the reason why I would recommend a Durston mill over anybody else it's because I know the quality is great and I know that totally. but it's not just that it's the aftercare as well isn't it the whole team are just yeah. are just brilliant absolutely anyway okay. sorry Louise, I was a bit childish I do apologize for the next question please. okay um we have far did it get Bonnie sorry Bonnie I started reading out your questions to try and shut it up um I cast an ingot and tried to roll out in the rolling mill my silver just crumbled and kind of shattered into pieces what would cause this? It's most probably contamination within the, the actual, the silver itself. Sometimes you think it's silver when it's not. Sometimes the Jason buys in scrap silver and he just looks and goes, yep, that's silver. But when you look at it closely, it's been bought from abroad, been bought on AliExpress, bought on Wish, bought on all these, these dodgy sites, bought on some, some fake, you know, Pandora rings that people buy on eBay because they want the cheapest prices, and they're not silver. They may be stamped 925, but that doesn't guarantee that they're silver. So always make sure that what you've got is silver. If you're buying in from the public or you've got some silver that you're melting down, that you're not really sure, but you can see 925, get yourself a little acid testing kit 
a Troy testing kit and make sure that it is silver because if it isn't silver and you're melting it down with other bits of silver, you've ruined the whole ingot. There's no way you're gonna be able to separate it. So always make sure what you've got is silver and that's what it sounds like. <laughs> Next question, please, Louise. Okay, um, one, two, two um, is saying, are face value gold and silver coins worth melting to practice jewellery making? Uh, again, providing if they are silver, We had definitely. this before. Was there some sort of issue, depending on where you are, with melting the mm. Queen's face? Yeah, yeah, Something, absolutely. I seem I, to remember something. Yeah, I think if they're in current circulation here, um, not including sovereigns. Um, that was quite an interesting, I read something about that, about uh, people buy coins, they say it, it's they, they're in circulation or they're current and you can, but you can't spend them in the shops. But anyway, um, so that's, that's the point. Uh, make sure that they are silver or whatever they are, but obviously make sure that you are allowed to melt them down because in this country, you are not allowed to melt down and deface the queen's Was it something, I, might have, I, might have, I seem to remember this came up yeah, gold coins this have a higher value a than melt. They ago, do, didn't they? but it mm. depends on how you buy them, Susan. Because if you buy them as scrap, if you buy them off eBay or someone like that, you can usually buy them for a scrap price. So secondhand coins, if you buy them, they are virtually traded as scrap. Um, obviously, there are certain dates that are more desirable. There are certain dates that. Um, they were never produced or hardly produced. Some you, you'll have some, some, some young Vicks, some old Vicks, you'll have shield backs. And if they are very good quality, yes, then they could fetch a lot more. But the majority of times, I've checked some sovereigns on eBay and they literally go for scrap. So you're better off, send them to the refiners to get the money for them or melt them yourself. Annie doesn't want to be haunted by the Queen. Oh, and neither do I, oh. Annie. It's bad enough being haunted oh. by Mrs. Lloyd. <laughs> <laughs> we call them Mel here, no date or faces. Okay, now you have next question, please. please. Okay, um, Tanya, oh, going back to the, the hoop earrings, um, they would be hollow tube for the earrings, and what's the best hinge to make? Oh, right. Um, hollow tubes are really, really awkward because, you know, as you bend a tube, it will kink. So what you have to do, there's a various ways that you can stop the tube from kinking. You can fill it with something like sand, you can fill it with something like water and put it in the freezer so it becomes ice. And then as you bend it, the sand that may be inside or the ice may be inside, when you bend it, it won't kink and won't um, crease because the filler on the inside stops it. You can buy small little springs, just like the way the plumber bends his, his tubes. I'm quite sure what's happening down there. Um, <laughs> so then you bend, you put the spring in, you bend the tube, take the, the, the spring out, and it's nice and curved. That is a good way. But there is another brilliant way. I've never tried it, but I've seen it, and it looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, some people get um, a piece of, of, of steel, and they will uh, bend the steel into that sort of shape, okay? And this curvature is the curvature of the metal, the tube that you want, okay? Uh, I've got to think of this now. Is it this way? Is it this way? And you put it through and you pull it, pull it through. Anyway, and then you have um, a draw plate here. And then I can't remember how you do this now. You put the tube over it in some way. And as you pull the tube and you draw the tube through um, as the tube comes over this I'm not making this up this is somewhere but I'm getting this all wrong I know I am <laughs> <laughs> but this has been hardened okay so it doesn't bend and as you pull the tube through this edge this way here the tube will act no it isn't do you know I can no I can't remember. No, 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 no. You don't pull the tube. You don't pull the tube. You pull the wire. You have this wire that you pull. As you pull this wire through, the tube is on the outside here. It doesn't go through the draw plate, but the draw plate is only big enough for the wire. But as then the, the, the wire is pulled through, I think... Anyway, the tube will bend, the tube will twist. My brain is addled because it's the heat, but there is this guy on YouTube which shows you how to do that. 
And it's absolutely amazing. Yes, uh, Teresa is saying, oh, Thomas has seen it YouTube onto the, tube, sorry, tube onto the flat side. Teresa is saying you put the tube over the wire on one side of the draw plate, sometimes with a washer, and pull the straight end of the wire. Yes, you pull the straight end of the wire, and as you do that, the curvature p curls the, um, it does, it curls the tube. Yeah. I, I've never done it. I've wanted to do it. So I'm going to have to try it one day. But yeah, that's the best way uh, to make a hollow tube. Or on Cookson's, you can buy it ready made. Cool. We have another question, please. Jade is asking about texture plates. Where's the best supplier? Um, Oxford texture plates. Oxford texture plates. Go onto Facebook. If you're in the UK, go onto Facebook, put Oxfordshire. Oxfordshire texture plates or Oxford texture plates. Lady by the name of Moira Connor. She will sell them to you. If you're in the US, uh, Roberta at Oregon Trail Silver. They are the main two suppliers. One in the US, one in the UK. Definitely. Next question, please. please. Oh, John is saying you can travel to Herkimer, New York to mine the Herkimer diamonds. Wow, nice. Yeah. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> Sandra, what can I use for doming until I get a dapping set? Just get yourself a piece of wood, um, depending on what size you want. Two by two, three by three, three by four, four by two, whatever you want. Um, yeah, so there's your piece of wood. This is the end grain, yeah. And what you do, you just get um, one of your burrs, a nice aggressive big burr, and just make a little depression. Yep, yeah, in, into that. If that makes sense into the end grain make it slightly dappled like that and you can buy uh, wooden doming punches really really cheap you can buy them off ebay you can buy them off etsy really cheap and you can use your doming set your doming punches into the end grain you put it into the end grain because it's a lot tougher and it won't dent if you put it into the to, to, to the uh lengthways yep yeah, it's quite soft the end grain of a piece of wood is really hard and that would be the best way. And you can do that. You, oh, you've got a stump. <gasps> I've got a stump. <laughs> Not something I boast about that often. Um, but yeah, if you've got a stump, um, I have the pleasure of, of talking to some guys, didn't I, a few doors up, who were cutting some trees down. Can you save me a stump? And I've got this tree stump now that I'm trying to dry but, out. Yeah, they were just like cutting trees and you criticised the cutting and you said, can you make sure you cut one really straight for me? <laughs> it's like, they're not here for you, Andrew. <laughs> well, yeah, he said, um, he said, oh, yeah, you've got, you got, you got plenty of stems over there. Go and choose which one you want. I mean, no, I don't want one I like want you that. to... I want it with a flat bottom and I want a flat <laughs> top. It has to be parallel. So, when I came back that night, what was on my doorstep was this massive, great big stem. It's about... 18 inches, two foot, and it's about two foot high. But the top is level. He didn't listen to me. So I got to well, find... Well, he didn't have to listen to you, did he? <laughs> you asked him for a stamp. <laughs> so I got to find someone with a big little chainsaw to cut it nice and level for me. But yeah, or you use a tree stump and you just gouge out some depressions that you can put your um, silver in. Okay, going back to the ring stretching, if you were the guys are asking, would you anneal? Before. Oh yes, if, yeah. if there's no stones there, definitely in the aisle, yes. Yep. Um, Anko, I wonder if the ring stretcher would be short enough to fit in a vice to stretch slower than when hammering it. I don't know, You'd ha I'd have to look it up um, on, on one of the sites, but I'm going to have to have a look. I'm going to have a look. A ring stretcher, um, yes. Okay, maybe have another question please. I have to put the cup on here now. For a second. Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Ryan is asking, what's a good beginner material to buy for practice? I currently have one mil brass sheet, but feel as if it feel as if it's a bit hard and or thick to work with for yeah, learning. See, I wouldn't use brass. I find brass is really quite harsh. People do use brass and it is good, but I find it a little bit brittle, a little bit, a little bit chattery. So I would always try and use something like copper which is a great substitute uh, or so we, we were talking about nickel silver we? then we decided we don't go for nickel silver but copper is a great substitute going back to this uh there we go there it is that's what i've been talking about for, okay this is available from proops this is on um on amazon 
It's seven pounds. Uh, it is a ring stretcher steel with nylon base ranging from an M to bigger than a Z. Very technical there, poops. Um, and I think you just put the ring on there. This, let's have a look, what does this say? Uh, ba -ba -ba -da, made from stainless steel, blah, 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 blah. Not to refer rings with stones in. Yeah, so there we go. That's exactly what I've been talking about. And there it is there. It looks like you may screw it down Ooh, on the top. I'm not quite sure on that. Or you simply hammer this and it stretches the mandrels out a little bit like that. But that's what I've been talking about. And yes, if you've got a vice that has jaws big enough, you could certainly put that in the vice. Certainly. Do we have a last question, Louise, do you think? Because we are getting close now, aren't we? Okay. Um... Dylan is asking, can I run my solder wire through my draw plate for thinner gauge? Yes, you can, or hammer it. Okay. Gabriella, how do you make an oval bezel fit a wide ring band? I've tried filling the bezel, but keep getting gaps. Oval bezel? How do you make an oval bezel fit a wide ring band? <sighs> Uh, oval bezel wide band filing but you still get gaps do you mean sort of like that yeah keep filing but I get get keep getting gaps I'm not quite sure do you mean where the bezel meets the wide ring your bezels have to be really deep for this um, because if it, you, you obviously, how can I say, you know, you've got the bezel and it needs to be this height, but if you've put it onto a wide band and it's just quite a small size, you've actually got to make the bezel so much bigger. So you've got to make the bezel deeper than what you actually need to allow for, you know, so you, that shape, you know what I mean? So there's a lot of filing, so you're gonna to have to make the band deeper, I would have thought, if that's what I'm thinking of. Um, Yes, I'm not quite sure. Bit more information, bit more information. Maybe have another question. Last yeah. question then. Uh, Crystal Rock Jewelry is asking how to solder a chain link that is attached to the stone without damaging the stones. You won't be able, if the stones can withstand heat, you should be able to, if it's very close to the stone, um, you can use something like a cool heat. Um, thermogel to put over the stone to protect it but if it's directly onto a bezel unless it's something like a diamond or a sapphire that you know there's no inclusions or glass filled or flux filled you should be able to do it but anything other than that you won't be able to solder anywhere near a stone at all. Um, oval bezel wide band I've used emery paper wrapped around my ring mandrel to file the same shape as the band yes you can but it's going to take a lot of filing a lot of filing um, Louise, any, any interesting questions that we can answer quickly or should we call that a day? That's about 40 uh, minutes, isn't it? Yes, Anything Sandra ask? is asking, the bulk chain I purchased is sterling with fine silver plating. Mm -hmm. It says not to solder it. Because the fine silver will burn off. Yeah, what is the best way to add a clasp to it without damaging the finish? If you're going to add a clasp, I would use a small little jump ring so say you've got your um your bolt ring here yep so this is your bolt ring there and the bolt ring has a little ring attached to it and then here is your chain don't try and solder this directly use a connecting jump ring to go through yep and then you solder that so your chain doesn't get hot and doesn't burn off put some cool heat over this to protect it and just solder that jump ring that joins the clasp to the chain and that would be the best way to do it. Andre got a Justin C110 after the 12 hour marathon, many Yay. thanks for the 20% coupon. Yes, Yay. nice one. And yes, if, if you are in no real hurry for a Durston mill, you can always hang on until about August time because we may have something coming up in August that will blow your socks away, but we're not going to say anything <laughs> more than that. 
So if you can wait a couple of months for a new Durston rolling mill, hang on. We got something absolutely fabulous for you in August. Is that Louise? Is that, is that about it, my dear? Um, do you want another question? Go on then. Let's have one more. Scrap over engineering yeah. has small curved brass ornaments, five centimeters. I want to make into earrings. Um, I'd like to attach by one pin through ear and one clip to attach along the edge of the ears. How do I make him a clip? Right now, listen now, listen, Andrew. <laughs> concentrate now. I know you're hot and bothered. Now, you ready? Go on. I have small curved brass ornaments. Yes. Five centimeters. Yes, that's too. That's huge. That's two inches. Yeah, I don't know why I'm doing that. It's like that. Yeah. Okay. I want to make into earrings. Yeah. I'd like to attach. I'd like. Sorry, I. It's me reading it. Stupid. Mm. I'd like them to attach by one pin through the ear and one clip to attach along the edge of the ears. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, one I, pin I, through the ear and one clip. Do you, oh, do, um, is it like a continental ear clip? Is that what, okay. are they continentals? Yeah, continental. <laughs> 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 hey, you won't go there, <laughs> will we? So, uh, <laughs> so there's the wire that comes round and there's like some, uh, some gubbins down here and there's a hinge that comes up to that, yeah? So and this is ear and this climbers, is, but if they're five centimetres... And this is hinged. Yeah, I, I, I really can't picture it. I'm ear afraid. climbers stay on the lobe, don't they? They stay yeah. close to the lobe, so... So I, I really can't picture... How you mean, I'm afraid, scrap over do you mean Do you mean climbers, scrap? Like ones that... They're kind of like inverted drops, aren't they? Which mm. don't dangle, if that makes sense. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Don't know. Really, really don't know. You'd have to give me a bit more information, show me a picture, and I can answer it in a little bit better for you. Um, all right, then. I think that's about it for today. I do apologise. Oh, oh, do you mean... Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know Andrew is a keeper. Yes, yes, I do. I do know that. I got big hands. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think we have to call that a day because I, we did waffle on. We did talk about, about, about gemstones beforehand, so I do apologise for that. Um, thank you, Dylan. Much appreciated. Good, good, good. Scrap, um, send us an email with some more info. Uh, and we'll. Sorry, Tom. No, oh, that's the negotiator, Tom. Oh, sorry, yeah. Mike. I don't know, what's your name Scrap Over Engineering? Can't remember. Sorry. <laughs> um, don't know the technical terms. Send me a little drawing. Louise at andrewberry.co.uk. Send me a little sketch or, you know, a little screenshot of, of what you mean and we can do our best then to yeah. have a little look for you. Totally. Yeah. Ma Ma Louise at Andrew Ma Berry. It's Martin, but it's not pronounced Martin, is it? Is it Martin? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yes, I know. You, cause, sorry. Yeah, I think I've spoken to you on email before, haven't I? So if you send me send me an email and um, Louis, yeah, you know my email address. Um, yes. And then we and then we can help. Yes. Cool. All right. Yeah. There we go. It was, the, 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 you know, we, it's, it's going to be great. When, when, when Kerry from uh, Gemology Rocks comes on the 12th of July, get your questions in. Don't just you keep, guys aren't going to get a them. look in because I'm going to have a whole list. Just just keep them to yourself. <laughs> and perhaps we can also ask about lab-grown diamonds and have about five or ten minutes talk about lab-grown diamonds mm -hmm. and what the process is and so forth. Um, absolutely. Yeah, hit the like button if you like it. Hope thank I Thank you, Romy. Okay, good. Thank you, Romy. Appreciate that. Um, but yeah, are we were quite interested with the Herkimer diamonds. Mm. Is that you cut the ends off, they're a normal stone, normal quartz. They can only be Herkimer's if they're double-ended and they can be mined anywhere and any quartz that is doubly truncated with the pointy bits is classed as a technical term. <laughs> this is classed as a Herkimer diamond. Interesting. Highly prized by collectors, it says here. Oh, how many have we got there, Lou? Five. Oh, highly prized. And how many do awards have? Hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> don't cut the yeah. Don't cut the off. Yes, don't yeah, cut it off. Yeah, because that stops it being a herkimer. Yes, Christine. I yes, ninety nine thousand. I can tell you now actually how many I got. We hit ninety nine thousand, 
yesterday, I do believe, and we are now on 99,025. So oh my I, I want to get to the 100,000 subscribers. So please, I would love it if you could just tell everybody about the YouTube channel. Because I want to get to 100,000 and I want my own little YouTube little plaque. What will you do when you get 100,000? You'll have to do something. To know what to do. I don't know. Let's think of something. How okay. are you going to? How are you going to celebrate? Okay, should we, should we just ask these guys. Yeah. What should What should we do when we get to a hundred thousand YouTube followers? What do you think? Let us know. Email us. Contact us. Whichever way you want to do it. Whatever you want to do, or write it in the description. Not the description. Write it in the comment section under this film. When we get to a hundred thousand, what do you want us to do for Dance you? Dance under a film. <laughs> do that anyway you've never seen me have you susan <laughs> so yeah let us know what you want to do when we get to 100,000. another 12 hour oh. Oh. <laughs> that's the oh, whole it's got to be something special yeah we were going to do that anyway yes we're going to be uh, a yeah. hundred thousand subscribers you get a silver creator awards to, yes yes we do get a silver but we want we want you to tell us to do something, giveaways, yeah, something giveaway. funny or, or whatever. Just let us know. Don't to put it in the chat, put it in the comment section under this and we'll uh, certainly, it's gonna be something better. Bonnie, it's gonna be something better than the membership. Drop, Drop some, some gold, gold in, in a glass, glass of champagne, champagne. and cheers. No, nice. it might, like I choke on it then. <laughs> <laughs> I forget it was me. <laughs> oh, pay a hundred, come for days tuition with me. Yeah, it's Ooh. quite a good idea, but then we're only limiting them to people in the UK, aren't we? We, we could do it remotely. Remotely? A remote. That'd be hard, wouldn't it? We'll think of something. We'll think, yeah, no, that's we'll I like that something. idea. That's... Do you know what? You can have an adjustable saw frame. You can have an adjustable saw frame. Because Louise have found, that anyway. Louise found <laughs> a box. That's nothing. Oh. Don't get me started. Right, everybody, I'm thirsty we can't go home yet. I've got stock to sort. Okay. Giveaway that we've made. Got to be something better than that, Gillian. It's got to be something. Do an opera. Do an opera. Oh, an opera. An opera? Opera. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you know, we went to, um, if you know London, Covent Garden, in the, right in the centre, there's like a courtyard right in the bottom. And there's... The couple of times I've been previously, years ago, there was like an opera singer and she wanders around singing in your face and basically just sings opera at you. And I, I love it. And I knew Andrew would hate it. So I took him. <laughs> <laughs> and she was there. We heard her like miles oh, away, didn't we? Gosh, she was just... But she was just stood oh. in the corner. I don't think she could walk around like she used to, but it was amazing. She was... But she just, she just wasn't quiet. She's an opera singer. What but did you expect? She, but when she finished, instead of going, thank you, thank you, she went, thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. She was fabulous. <laughs> oh, <laughs> really She fab. did my head in. I loved it. You had a oh. face like thunder the whole time. A face like a sat backside. <laughs> did you put it on Facebook at all? No. <laughs> no. <Yes. laughs> it was funny, Penny. Yeah. yeah. But I wanted to go. I liked it. Perhaps we could give away a Ronan Mill. Yeah? Couldn't we? For we could, give away, could give away rolling. No, it's going to be something better than that, Jacqueline. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you don't want stuff that I made. How about giving away a rolling mill? But not just any old rolling mill, a Durston rolling mill. Mm. It's going to be a better than anybody else has given away before. <sighs> Have a think. It's got to be something better than a normal. Yeah, it's got to be better than somebody's. Get the giveaways. Right, we're going. Take Let care. Let me think about that. Or a bench mate. One with gears to save my poor back. Yes, Penny, you can win, couldn't you? you can try and enter. Bench mm. mate, bench mate, yeah, bench mate, we could do that. Um, yeah, so that's about it. We're going to see you all next week, um, 21st, 21st of June next week. And what happens on the 21st of June, Louise? GMRG <gasps> Rocks Takeover! Yay! No, it's 12th no. of July. Oh, yeah, sorry, I wasn't listening again. <laughs> <laughs> 12th of July. Um, what did you say again? <laughs> what happened this time next week? 
on the date of the 21st is the summer solstice. But also, what else is it? It's our engagement anniversary, it's isn't it? It's our engagement anniversary. Yeah. Three years it'll be. Wow. Wow. Is it? Three years since we got engaged. Two years? Two years. No, Two years. Three years. Two years. I f lockdown has fuddled up my brain. Two years. What about giving away an actual bench? The, it's shipping. It's shipping, I think, that mm. would cause the hassle with that. But we can also have a chat with my friend Matthew Yu to try and give something away. This is this is the thing, isn't it, with, with Matthew? He does. He's, he's brilliant, isn't he? Oh, supports us 100%. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Because the last... So he's, he's good. He's very, very good to all of us, isn't he? He is. Because the last 12 hours, he gave away two Ronin Mills. Yeah. Disc cutters, um, uh, doming sets, dapping mm -hmm. sets. He just gave so much away. He is an absolute diamond, isn't he? He is. Mm -hmm. Shipping of a bench is is killer to the US. The good thing, Elizabeth, is the fact that he has a warehouse in Arizona, and now it ships direct from Arizona, so nothing should be shipping from the UK. <gasps> so anniversary bling, bling for Louise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't keep up. I can't, but she has I to, love it. you have to buy another layer for your jewellery box already, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to go. 21st of June, you will see us for another question and answer at 4pm. Anything else you want to say, Louise? No, I don't think so. I think we've covered everything, haven't we? Yes, I think we have. So, everyone, say goodbye, Louise. Goodbye. Everyone, take care. Have a lovely, lovely week. We will see you 21st of June, 4pm, for the next question and answer. Take care, everybody. You live in New Zealand? Yes, it's going to take, cost a lot to post in New Zealand. Right, everyone, take care. See you next week. Take care. Fade to black in a minute. Wait for it, Louise. Wait for it. I'm waiting. Take care. Bye. <laughs>